Today, I am sitting down and talking to Just Kidden Singh, who's now in Singapore, and we're going to be talking about life in Singapore. So let's introduce him now. So how are you doing, Just Kidden? I heard you, like, you told me you went to the gym today. It's been a busy day, even though it's a day off, yeah? No, I actually applied yeah. leaf just for this. So I actually, oh. um, yeah, so I took leaf. So uh, at, uh, an army personnel has 14 days in a year to clear leaf. And I think oh, I'm on, like, I was on like nine. So I took one day off just for this. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm so honored to yeah. hear that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you can see like eye bags and stuff. I'm like so sleepy. I'm like sleep deprived <laughs> and all that. Man, the army would do that to you. I can imagine. So like, yeah, why don't you, while we're straight on to it, why don't you just tell us a bit about you know, the NS National Service that you're doing? Well, there's not much I can say, but, um, you know, but, yeah, this is just, um, for people who don't know why I'm in Singapore, um, I'm actually doing my National Service. So every Singaporean male citizen has to serve two years in the Army or Navy or Air Force. Usually you start off in the Army and then you get posted out either to the Air Force or Navy or, or stay in the Army, obviously. So... There are a lot of different things that you do in the army and um yeah just back here for two years trying to get this over and done with and fly back to australia yeah get back here yeah. as soon as it's over and done with yeah it, yeah it must be like that's the big thing about ns like you you were like raised in australia this is in your like the trade is like your home environment in a sense yeah. and then you know you go to singapore just for ns it was it difficult to kind of like get used to that that it not even, it's not a new new lifestyle to you because obviously you know singaporean lifestyle but was it different to kind of get used to living there yes um it was very different because you know when you come back here for like a few weeks back here to yeah i'm going back to australia i'm all good and all that but when you come yeah. back for two years you're just like okay what's now like what do you do now you know what i mean yeah it's been so obviously it's been so long. Wait, are you wait? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> I can. No, I'm chilling. I'm chilling nearby my um the apartments um swimming pool. So because um right. the house and the house sleeping there, so I don't want to wake him up. Yeah. So it, it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a nice sunny day there by the looks of it, and it's a really nice day today. Uh, and yeah. over here, so I'm like. No, that's that's really good that it's weather staying up but it must like the humidity in singapore is one of the hardest things to deal with honestly like going you there no idea <laughs> you have no idea you you go in, into the shower you have a nice shower cold shower you walk out you drying yourself and you start sweating again once you come out, yeah, you're, 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 you're just back to square one you tell you the start and back to square one you know yeah you're walking you're walking for like five minutes and you're drenched you're like soaking wet God. and the thing about singapore is that you pretty much walk to everywhere you go yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, even, go. yeah everywhere it's like it's just walkable you can walk to the goddaughter you can walk to a shopping center you can walk to the grocery store there's no need of taking taxis and driving and all that mm. so it is very it's just it's all different um way of living here it's very different you know you're so used to walking to yeah. like you're asking your parents mom let's go to the west field let's go to the gate let's go but you have to drive here you're just like oh, yeah, yeah. i'm just gonna go for a walk and just walk to the mrt or whatever to take the train to the shops or what mm, yeah so is it's, it, it's different is it still like that now because of COVID-19 is Singapore has got to be well on top of it because it, it's Singapore they're on top of their stuff <laughs> yeah um so the thing is right we have um this we had a lockdown mm-hmm. so this lockdown was for about a good two months or something so you only could go out for essentials and knowing the Singaporean government you read online it's one of the strictest governments out there so if you are you're caught outside for not non-essentials reasons you're just going to get find three hundred dollars on the spot like the questions asked you don't have a mask on it's three hundred dollars fine and um yeah it's it's very it's 
I mean, now it's eased up a bit, so now you can hang out with five people and all that. Yeah. You, know, you can re- visit family and all that, but um, it, back then it was, it was really tough. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're doing better off than a lot of the other countries, so I'm not going to complain and say <laughs> how it's all bad and all that. Like, sure, it's just a mask, you know what I mean? Yeah. You wear a mask. You just wear a mask for like a good 10, 20 minutes and you already reached your destination. You take your mask off for you don't know what. Mm. So, yeah. do, you, do you have to wear a mask when you're like doing going out to yeah, going back out for NS or anything? Yeah. Yeah, you still have to even it's, during the it's mandatory. Stuff. It's yeah, everything's oh. mandatory. So are you um we get masks from the um, army as well. We get like the army printed ones. Oh yeah. <laughs> And then we get like a few because in the army everything is you have it has to be like similar like everybody has to wear the same attire same mask same everything yeah so usually it's black but now since i'm in logistics you can let wear literally any mask you want but as long as you got a mask it's all good yeah, as long as you got a mask it's all good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, but obviously when you go for parades but when you go for parades and stuff you yeah. got to make sure you have the same ones on so all wear black and all that so yeah man that must be like other parades things where you just have to do it in your like your own section or is it like on display for any platoon, of the parents platoon. uh platoon level platoon. so yeah uh every parade is done in platoon levels um but i think now seeing how COVID restrictions are slowly easing off and um borders are opening to malaysia really soon oh, yeah. so i'm hoping i'm so i'm hoping you know we can go back to company level and uh Doing some parades with the other guys from the other platoons as well. Yeah, it was was it hard for you to actually make friends with like all the people there? Because obviously they would probably speak Malay um, predominantly, I assume. Was it hard for you yeah. to go there speak English? Well, I know bits and pieces. Like, like I I could speak like the basics, like how you going, what's up, uh, what are you eating, all that, the basics. But when it when it came to having a convo, obviously everybody spoke in English, you know what I mean? So, and Hi. English is, is the first language in Singapore. It's like, you have to learn it and all that. So, your, your mother tongue goes, whatever else you, like, you know, for Punjabis, our, our mother tongue is Punjabi, and the Malays are, mm. you know, Malaysians or Muslims are Malay. So, um, you know, we, we have, we have a lot of different languages in the army as well. We work, guys from Burma, Vietnamese kids and all that. So it's a yeah. very multicultural army. It's a very multicultural <laughs> army. So, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I remember you told me that you had there was someone from Perth or Western Australia or something that was there in, yes, in the platoon. Yes. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my platoon we had this I had this guy from Perth and every time I talked to him I, I always spoke to like an Australian accent. <laughs> yeah. Actually it was it was both ways. Whenever we both used to speak to each other it was an Australian accent. And then when it came to like the locals, we just turned the Singapore accent back on. Yeah. And so that, that was, people just, just, just like look that. at us like, are you guys okay? <laughs> like, are you guys good? Yeah. Yeah. It felt like I was talking normally to someone with like this Australian accent and trying to have to put on the Singapore accent. Yeah. So over the years, because over the years in Australia, I've always put on, I've learned to like, like, make the Australian accent my first accent yeah so like so yeah the Singapore accent was the secondary accent for those um for like at home family and all that yeah <laughs> yeah so it is, yeah it's it's very people laugh at it but I feel it's just like normal for me because like yeah when I was in Australia my mom speak, has a Singapore accent so the accent never dies off so even even when I come to your place and I'm talking to your parents, you because you're half Singaporean as well. So I always always talk to your dad in a Singaporean accent. Yeah. 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 No, I feel the same thing. When I speak Punjabi, sometimes I feel like there's certain words I just speak with like an emphasized accent or anything or something. Yeah, yeah. It happens, you know. Yeah. But like, um, I mean, for me, like yeah. the Ganges in like the Ganges in um Singapore, they all actually have like a really strong Singaporean accent as well. For those who like done seva for a very very long time so for with them you don't have to have to speak the job you just speak in english like okay 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 can 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 so yeah works, it works out yeah it works so, speaking of like at home and stuff as well like 
if like one thing I'm sure that youth watching this might be thinking, not just wondering, oh, what it's like doing NS or going to Singapore in this time, but then also what it's like just you know, you're pretty young and then you're going out living on your own with your brother like as well, but living on your own and it's you know, it's a pretty independent thing to do as well. Do you wanna like share with us some of the maybe challenges or experiences or anything you've learned, like, you know, being more independent okay. in that sense? Yeah. I could go on for hours. I think <laughs> like the challenges are a lot, honestly. Like um first thing obviously is like your basics, waking up on time and all of that. Because I know back in the show, I think ninety percent of the kids who wake up have their parents late after school and you're just like mm-hmm. Mummy, Panjimento, they do, and all that. And then here, you're just like, you see, if you're like, even five minutes before your alarm even rings, you're like, I better wake up now, even I'm going to get a deep trouble from sergeants or like your officer or your warrant officer. So, your first thing you do is obviously, you know, you yeah. wake, the, the discipline really built in you, like waking up on time, making sure you get your stuff done. Is it like that when you're on a day Sorry? off or something? Is it like that Sorry? when you're off as well? When I'm at home, yeah, of course. I'm like, yeah. even when I have to go up with my mates and all that, I'm just like, look, I've woken up five minutes before seven to six fifty-five. Look, wake up, daydream or whatever. Just stay off the bed, or go make a yeah. coffee early, earlier, earlier coffee or what. But um, oh. I feel are, you, like, are, you, are you like hooked on coffee now or something because of it? Yes, <laughs> I, oh, I, I have, I, I have about like. 10 cans of coffee, like pre-made coffee in cans, oh my sitting God. in my fridge. So yeah, every week I just grab one and I head off to camp. Another like, youth can fall into the coffee in like last or Because <laughs> that's, uh, you, you've got one now. So. Always, uh, always. I think if, I, if I'm not like, if I'm doing something that like needs me to be like 100%, I always have coffee. Right? Even when yeah. I'm like, like, on my way to camp, I have a coffee. And then once I reach camp, I buy a coffee again. And then after <laughs> lunch, I buy another coffee. Because, you know, oh you get food coma from all the good food, right? Come on, you know you know better than anyone. You get food yeah. coma from, like, from good food. So I'm just like, you know, yeah, all right, I need a coffee again. So I smash another coffee. Then on my way home, I get another coffee. That's about, like, what, six coffees in a day? Maybe wow. in between, get more, more than <laughs> one coffee. The, the that, plus side is it's enough. cheap. The plus side is cheap. It's really cheap. That's, That's like 90 cents for like they thought it or whatever. They thought it's like your traditional coffee, and your tea. Mm, and you can yeah. get your copy or your copies, which is like your coffees, obviously. Now, but it's it's yeah. like that with the food as well. Like you said, like you, when you have that the good food, you get real lazy and tired and stuff. The food there Bro, is so honestly, cheap. Like, yeah, I'm just going to expose myself here a bit. But like, I think it was like a few days ago. Um, so I've been buying food, the, buying in food the entire week last week. I had like yeah. groceries and like onions and like avocados sitting in my house and then and i think it was monday i was like yo i was kind of lazy to go out today so i literally went to my fridge and everything was like spoiled the milk was expired this was that i was like what am i doing <laughs> i'm just like why you know but obviously obviously with the convenience though there's actually a vegetarian shop right under my house oh yeah so you go down it's about like a two minute walk and you really got vegetarian food in your like for me so it's really i would say the food convenience is really like it's a big thing in, in singapore where in australia yeah. obviously it's really different because we have yeah. very limited options like, the, like the, all the options are like either two hours away or they are the city like lord of the Gotta fries the ve- vegan yeah. stuff and all that but like if you, if you want to get like good vegetarian food the only place you're going to think of is your own is your own kitchen right because mm. you can't, like, especially cooking. now as well for you guys, I bet it's really hard for you guys right now because of COVID. You guys can't go to the city and get Lord of the Fries. That's not five kilometers away. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it feels so good going back out to eat again here. Oh, yeah, so nice. yeah, yeah. I, I remember when I first, when we had the first, like, one of the restrictions off was um, you may go out for food and you can dine in. Yeah. That was probably the best, um, like, time of my two years i would say like the times that we could finally go out and eat instead of taking it away because you know there's no mm. there's there's no 
that feeling where yo, I just bought this incredible meal and all that. You just bring it home and it already looks like like looks it doesn't look appetizing anymore. Like it's like, do I want to eat this now? Yeah. It's, it doesn't it doesn't look like what it says on the menu. Like it loses the yeah thing. Yeah. Exactly. Like it's, it's just like where's the mock meat? But it says nothing. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that, but, yeah. that reminds me, like just uh, a couple, of, two days ago or so, my mom made tose. So then we had tose, chutney, the dal, and everything with it, which was Yo. like real, like a nice I, I, I bought tose from on Tuesday, at tose on Tuesday. Yeah, which yeah. was, I bought two. I bought like a plain one. And in Singapore, we have this cheese tose, which is like in between in, in, in the uh, tose, there's a lot of cheese. Ooh. <laughs> because okay. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't eat, I didn't eat lunch. So I she had coffee, and coffee is quite filling. I don't know why. So I was like, nah, I'm not hungry. I just smashed like three coffees down. I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm good. And I'm like, I'm like starving. I'm like, what do I do? So I get off at my a station before mine, and just find like a dosa shop. I get like two doses. I'm just like, all right, it's a feast <laughs> for me, boys. <laughs> Go oh, home, man. put my phone up, watch a Netflix show, and yeah, just eat. No, that, that, that's that's that i would say that's the life but that's a lot of hard work going on this side there as well i'm not sure about that that's that's behind that's obviously all the stuff i re- can't really talk about it right now but yeah maybe all the hard work is behind the scenes you know it, mm. even on the so even on social media i get a few a lot of questions going yo army life looks so easy army life looks so easy i'm just like uh, <laughs> no it's not easy at all no nah, it's I just all like- I'm basing it off Our Boys to Men, the movie, so... <laughs> nah, nah, it's nothing like that. The Our Boys to Men, right, sure, like, a majority of the things you see is true, but you don't see the mental game of mm. a person. Every person is mentally challenged in a different, different way. For me, it was family. Like, I missed family a lot when I was here. So, yeah. for me, that was one of my biggest... um like issues i had like where's my family i need my family like yo when i well like, once i book i'm like everybody's talking about yo i'm gonna have a dinner with my mom going to dinner with my dad i'm just like yo, wow no in australia stuck in some yeah. COVID nonsense i'm just like okay that's sad but yeah it, it's hard being away from family and it's you know, very you're, hard. Doing, you're doing so well you and your brother like it's been nine months or so maybe about maybe. nine months yeah about nine months, yeah. yeah. So you've been there almost halfway, which is like the good thing. <laughs> but, oh, I'm so you have no idea. I'm actually so excited. Um, in in Singapore, there's actually an app created just to let you know how many days left you have in the army. <laughs> it's, it's called oh, a ORD. ORD means um officially something something. I can't remember now. It's the top of my head. Yeah. You know, I'm on leave. I don't have to remember all this stuff. <laughs> but um. <laughs> No, nah, but well, this is all the calendar, so that's when you pretty much pass out and you start becoming yeah. a regular. So every year you go for reservists, so that's so that you're, you're ready for reservists. So people have this app just for showing how many days they have left in camp, how many leaves they have, and all this. I'm just like, why? Just, just go with nah. the flow. You're, you, like, yeah. you'll know when you're done. You, like, you'll know when you're done, like, People will start telling you, oh, so many months left, so many months left. Oh, you can do it. Keep going, keep going. Two more months. And then when you know it, like, to me, it doesn't even feel like I've been for nine months. Yeah. I feel, it, like, I've, I've been, I feel like it's been like three months or something. I'm just like, time flies. Time really flies. It really does. It's because you've been probably been keeping really busy. So then, you know, and you know, like those you, if I had that app, you know, I'd be tempted to just check it every day. Exactly, that's the thing. Going. Everybody checks it like every single day. I'm just like, there's just no point. Yeah. The more you, the more you see, you're just gonna time's just gonna go slower. Like even though time waits for no man, but psychologically, you know, you're just like, oh, 310 days, 109, eight, and you still, but you don't see the 300 in front. You're just like, yo, just let it go, let it. Like, I don't even know how many days I have yeah. left. I only know I have like a year and a half or something. But you know, yeah, I, 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 I don't want it to be a, um, a thing where I just keep on seeing how many days I have left. I just want to enjoy. I want to live in the moment. Yeah. And that's just really the important. Great, like, it's, uh, when you, like when you brought up the whole family thing, that's such an important thing to always like just remember. Like people out there who are watching this thing, they're away from family. Um, but, you know, they're try to live in the moment that you can try to 
don't let these things try to take you down as much as you can. Like, you know, do keep busy, do stuff that you can. You're like, I'm sure you're going out. I've seen you know Snapchat stories and Instagram stories. You're going out with your friends from the army and course, everything. You're doing small things you to keep to. you busy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to keep busy wherever you are. Like, even like in Australia, for like your instance, like you guys have to keep busy. Like, you know, I I've, I've, mm, yeah. I speak to a few. I spoke to a few of my guys few of my friends um a few days ago and they were just saying like how it's really um it's really depressing and all that i'm just like but you guys have to make the most out of it you know what i mean you guys gotta mm-hmm. you guys have to like understand that this is a global pandemic it's no joke and all that and you guys should stay at home make the most out of it like just read your books exercise at home do just keep yourself busy that's the only way you can go through this pandemic well the same thing with us as well find shows that that interests you and just keep watching it keep keeping fit eat healthy yeah and, that's and, 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 literally, and, and literally before you know it bang the lockdown's over everything's good ready to go back to normal life yeah it'll, it'll yeah. feel like that you look back and you'll be like oh wow you know i did all this stuff you know i have all these opportunities i got this stuff done and maybe you yeah. know i Maybe one of the shows people out there could be watching is our voice of you. So if you have any friends out there who are not yet watching the show, tell them to come watch I the mean, show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that's but, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, just keep uh, yourself busy, honestly. Just keep yeah. yourself busy. That's that's the best way to move forward. Like, that's what we did as well back when we had our lockdown. The first few days were like, oh, lockdown, great. Great. Just more, one and one more country with another lockdown. And then... Like, we had mates in the show going, yo, read this. Because I think that time you guys went on lockdown. Or you guys yeah. had, like, restrictions, but you guys went on lockdown. And in few of my mates said, yo, watch this show. Watch this. Do this. Do that. Keep yourself busy. And, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, in the next episode, you know, we obviously talk about what happens, like, during the lockdown, photos and all that. But let's keep that for next episode. Yeah. So, but speaking of the next yeah. episode, we'll wrap this episode up. And then in next week, you can tune back with just Kiran and myself as we talk about his modeling and some of the photos that he has taken up in Singapore as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you, just Kiran, for joining me today. Thank you. Um, Thank getting you. Getting this Thank episode you. done again. <laughs> I hope all back goes well for the... Sorry? I'm going back to sleep after this. <laughs> back to sleep, yeah. Hopefully you rest <laughs> easy, I guess. Um, so yep. please, all audiences out there, everyone out there, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, and share it around, and make sure you follow the Voice of these playlist so you can keep up to date with all the episodes coming out. So do just get in, and everyone out there, just like, laugh at the Bye, Vidya Kakao. Bye, Vidya